Oneness of God, the Ultimate Solution to the Trinitarian Controversy Part 4, End. Allah rectifies the Christian's misconception concerning the divinity of Jesus. The Christian concept of God includes Jesus as one of three in a trinity. This is obviously a sort of misconception, which is based on their allegation that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Being all-knowing, all-perfect, and devoid of all the animalistic qualities the Christians attribute to him, God categorically rectifies such misconception as the following verses show. Some of the idolaters said, Allah has taken the angels as daughters. Allah is free of their statement. He, may he be glorified, is self-sufficient and is not in need of any of his creation. The control of whatever is in the heavens and the earth is his. You, O idolaters, do not have any proof for this statement of yours. Are you saying such a serious statement about Allah, by attributing a child to him even though you do not know the one reality of this and you have no proof? Curran, Eunice, 10 68 It does not befit Allah to have a son, exalted and free he is from this. When he intends something, it is enough for him to say regarding this thing, be, and it most definitely becomes. So he who is like this is free from having a son. Curran, Mariam, 1935 the Jews, the Christians, and some of the idolaters said, The merciful has taken a son. You, who say this, have indeed brought something monstrous. The heavens almost rupture because of this detested statement, the earth almost splits, and the mountains almost fall in ruins. All of this because they have attributed a son to the merciful. Allah is high above that by far. It is not befitting of the merciful to take a son as he is pure of that. There is no angel, human being or jinn in the heavens and earth but that he will come in submission to his Lord on the day of judgment. He has full knowledge of them and has numbered them exactly. Nothing of theirs is hidden from him. Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment alone, without any helper or any wealth. Curran, Mariam, 19,88-95 Allah has not taken a child as the disbelievers claim, nor is there any true deity alongside him. If there were to be any true deity alongside him, every deity would take his share of the creation he made and they would dominate one another, causing the order of the universe to become corrupt. The reality is that none of this has occurred, proving that the true deity is Allah alone. He is pure and holy of what the idolaters describe him with, namely partners and children which are unbefitting for him. Curran, Mumai Nun, 23 91 Listen carefully. Indeed, the idolaters, idolaters from their attributing lies unto Allah. Attribute offspring to him, and indeed, they are liars in this claim of theirs. Would Allah prefer daughters for himself which you dislike, over sons which you like? Never. O oh, idolaters, what is wrong with you that you make this unjust judgment where you make daughters for Allah and sons for yourself? Would you not take admonition of this wrong belief you are on? If you were to take heed, you would stop saying such a statement. Or do you have a clear proof from a divine scripture or a messenger from Allah? Then bring your book which bears for you evidence of this if you are true in what you claim. And the idolaters made blood ties between Allah and the angels when they claimed the angels are Allah's daughters and their mothers are the elite jinns. But the jinns already know Allah will bring them to be reckoned, so if there was lineage between him and them he would not bring them for that. Pure is Allah and exalted from what the idolaters describe him with of that which does not befit him, such as children, partners. Except Allah's chosen servants, as they do not describe Allah except with the qualities of majesty and perfection which are befitting for him. So you, O idolaters, and what you worship besides Allah. You cannot misguide anyone from the true religion. Except one whom Allah has decreed is from the people of hell, as Allah will carry out his decree regarding him and so he will disbelieve and enter the fire. As for you and your gods, you do not have power over that. And the angels said, stating their servitude to Allah and their being free of what the idolaters claimed. There is nobody amongst us except that he has a known position in Allah's worship and obedience. And we declare him pure of qualities and descriptions which do not befit him. Curran, Safet, 37 151-166 The misconception that Jesus, allegedly being the only begotten Son, has the same divine essence as the Supreme Creator is, indeed, a great unforgivable sin. Every Christian knows that Jesus was a man, and as such, he does not possess any of the divine attributes of Allah. In fact, the Bible testifies that, God is not a man, Numbers 23 19. With this alone, the Christians are either ignorant of their own scriptures or they are merely blind followers of a false god after all, their Bible tells them more than once that Jesus was a man. Timothy 2 5, Acts 2 14 22, 
and John 1 29 30. By the same token, the Bible mentions the weaknesses of Jesus. Just like any other man, Jesus felt the basic human needs of hunger and thirst, Matthew 21 18, John 19 28. By the same token, like anyone who needs to rest when the day is gone, Jesus also slept, Mark 4 38, Luke 8 23. The case of Allah is entirely different as Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. The Glorious Quran 2 255 and, nothing of his creation resembles him. He is the one who hears the statements of his servants, and the one who sees their actions. Nothing of that escapes him and he will recompense them for their actions, if good then with good, and if evil then with bad. Curran, Shura, 42 11. Thus, the Christian concept of the deity of Jesus is absolutely contrary to the divine unity of God. The Holy Curran states. The Christians who say that, Allah is part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have committed disbelief. Allah is far above such a statement. Allah is not many, but He is only one God who has no partner. If they do not stop saying such things, a painful punishment will afflict them. Will these people not retract this statement, repent to Allah and ask His forgiveness for the idolatry they committed? Allah is forgiving towards the one who repents, whatever may have been the sin, even if it was disbelief. Allah is compassionate to the believers. Curran, Maida, 5 73 74. Allah, may he be glorified, said to all his servants, Do not take two beings of worship. The being deserving of worship is only one who has no second nor any partner. So fear me only and do not fear others besides me. To him alone belongs everything in the heavens and on earth, he created, owns, and controls all of it. To him alone obedience, submission, and sincerity is due always. Will you, then, fear anyone other than Allah? No, instead fear him alone. Curran, Nal, 16 51-51 The Christian doctrine that Jesus had to die on the cross, because nothing in this world is holier than his blood to atone for the sins committed by the entire human race, is so obscure. It is absolutely unthinkable, for instance, that those of the previous generations who received and followed the divine messages through the chain of former prophets, Noah, Abraham, Moses and the like, could not attain salvation simply because they did not af from Jesus Christ as their Savior. Thus, accepting this misconception would be against all laws ever known to man, let alone the divine law of Allah. Allah the Almighty is all-knowing. And for sure he is fully aware of how the Christian Church imposed their own fabricated dogmas, like the divinity of Jesus and blood atonement, on peoples worldwide. Such dogmas were not at all taught by any of the prophets, including Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. In refuting the Christian concept of salvation, through Jesus Christ, Allah the Almighty explicitly emphasizes that one's own sin is his sole responsibility, and should not be borne by another. The Holy Quran states. Say, O Messenger, to these idolaters, shall I search for someone other than Allah as a Lord when he, may he be glorified, is the Lord of everything. He is the Lord of those things that you worship besides him. No innocent person will bear the sin of another. Then your return will be to your Lord alone on the day of judgment, and he will inform you about religious matters that you used to differ about when you were in the world. Allah is the one who made you successors of those whom came before you on earth, so that you inhabit it after them. He has raised some of you in rank over others, in terms of physical form, livelihood, and other aspects, in order to test you through what he has given you. Your Lord, O Messenger, is quick in delivering justice, since anything that is approaching is close. And he is also forgiving and compassionate towards those of his servants who repent to him. Curran, and Am, 6 164. Belief in one God, the key to salvation. For one to attain salvation, that is, for him to be saved from the torment of hellfire, he has to firmly believe that there is no God but the one and only true God, Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says. The key to paradise is the testimony to the fact that there is no God but Allah. Reported by Muadhb, Jabal, based on Hadith compilation by Muslim. See Waliyadin M. B. A. Al Kadib Al Amri Al Tabrizi, Mishka Tulmasabi with Arabic text, Vol I, Trans, N. Anat. 
by Abdul Hamid Siddiqui, New Delhi, Kitab Bhavan, 1984, p. 27. He who died knowing, and acknowledging it, that there is no God but Allah, he is in fact entitled to get into paradise. Reported by Uthman, Allah be pleased with him, and also compiled by Muslim. Ibid, p. 23. By the same token, any person who deviates from the belief in Allah, the one and only true God, will have hellfire as his ultimate abode. As evidenced in the following saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Two things yield inevitable results. A person said, Allah's messenger, what these two things are. He said, he who died associating anything with Allah would definitely enter into hellfire and he who died without associating anything with Allah he in fact entitled himself to go into paradise. This hadith, prophetic saying, was reported by Jabir, Allah be pleased with him, and compiled by Muslim. Ibid, p. 24. The foregoing hadith conforms to Allah's saying that he forgives sins other than that of associating other gods with him, as the following Quranic verse manifests. Allah does not forgive the crime of associating partners with him, for anyone who does so and dies in that state will live eternally in the fire of hell. He may forgive all other sins besides associating partners with him for whomever he wills if such people die committing those sins without repentance, out of his mercy and grace. Whoever associates anything as a partner with Allah has gone far away from the truth, as he has made the creation equal with the Creator. Quran, Nisa, 4 116 For anyone to strengthen his faith and attain salvation, he should, therefore, contemplate the foregoing verse. He should always bear in mind that, being the wisest of judges, Allah is just and does not wrong his creatures in any way. He does not lessen the good they do by the weight of even a tiny particle or dust, and he does not add to their disobedience in any way. Even if only an atom's worth of good is done, he multiplies the reward, from his grace, and through this increase he gives a great reward. Curran, Nisa, 440 Furthermore, the following verses, reflecting Allah's justice, should inspire every man to seek salvation through complete faith in him. Instead of irrationally seeking salvation through blood atonement. Whoever does good deeds in accordance with the sacred law, whether male or female, while having faith in Allah, we will grant them in this world a good life. By their being pleased with Allah's decree, content and guided towards righteous actions. And we will reward them in the afterlife in accordance with the best good deeds that they used to do in the world. Quran, Nal, 16 97. Whoever does a bad action, he will never be rewarded except with the like of what he did, without punishment being added to it. And whoever does a good action seeking Allah's pleasure through it, whether the doer is male or female, provided he is a believer in Allah and his messengers, will enter paradise on the day of judgment. Allah will grant them provision, through what he has placed in it of fruits and the everlasting pleasure which will never end, without account. Quran, Mumin, 40 40. That no person will bear the sin of another. And that man will only obtain the reward of the action that he did. And that his action will be openly seen on the day of judgment. Then he will be given the recompense of his action in full without reduction. Curran, Najm, 53, 38-41 On that great day on which the earth will quake, the humans will come to of the place of reckoning in groups, to see the deeds they committed in the world. So whoever did a good or righteous deed equal to the weight of a small ant, will see it in front of him. And whoever did an evil deed equal to that, will see that in front of him also. Curran, Zilzal, 99-6-8 Thus, complete faith in Allah, the one and only true God, is essential for one's own salvation. Faith becomes meaningful only when it is translated into practice. So, fortunate is he whose belief and deeds are always meant for pleasing Allah alone. Summary and Concluding Remarks This book has shown historical facts surrounding the Trinitarian controversy. It has shown that the Trinitarian doctrine was ratified only in the 4th century, proving that Jesus, peace be upon him, was not its own author. Christendom has for centuries been in disarray, and the real followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, found the Trinitarian doctrine very strange and abominable. They not only opposed it in words, but many of them also stood firmly in defense of the divine unity of God, a doctrine taught by Jesus himself and all other prophets, peace be upon them all. The leaders and members of the Apostolic Church, a group of the real followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, died in thousands as a result of persecution against them by the Romans in collaboration. With those of the Pauline Church, the Unitarian Christians preferred to die for a noble cause, i.e., in their great attempt to defend their monotheistic belief, rather than accept the mysterious doctrine of Trinity. 
The Trinitarian school of thought dominated the Christian world only after the Pauline Church imposed it by force on those who neither understood it nor sincerely accepted it as a divine precept. Such coercion was strongly condemned and resisted by those who believed that Jesus was a mere prophet of God, and not one of three in a trinity. Politics, however, played a very significant role in selling the idea of triune God to the Christian masses. In fact, it took Christendom more than 300 years to ratify the Trinitarian doctrine. But even after ratification, the Unitarian Christians continued to defy it. Imposition of the death penalty for those who opposed the Trinitarian system had ultimately given it a clear commanding edge over the pristine tenets of the Apostolic Church. The book has likewise examined some of the controversial personalities behind the success of the Trinitarian doctrine. These include Athanasius, Constantine, and Paul. These individuals were as controversial as the Trinitarian doctrine itself. For instance, Athanasius was considered by virtue of an imperial decree as a public enemy who was wanted by the then Emperor Constantius, dead or alive. And this happened years after the ratification of the Trinitarian doctrine. In his attempt to save his life, he resorted to hiding from one place to another until he discovered a young woman who was known for her exquisite beauty. Their clandestine affair resulted in an illicit, adulterous crime by a man who had engineered the Athanasian Creed, the Trinitarian Doctrine. By the same token, Emperor Constantine, who ratified the Doctrine of Trinity, was himself a tyrant and criminal who murdered his son, his wife, and many more, because of his lust for political power. Neither did he understand the real theological foundation of Christianity nor was he himself a real Christian. His crimes, including the murder of thousands of innocent individuals, coupled with his paganistic belief, were grievous. Ironically, however, life was made easy for him by the Christian clergymen. They offered him forgiveness, despite the fact that only God can forgive those grievous sins. So, in return, Constantine gave them imperial protection, and, subsequently, he ratified for them their doctrine of Trinity. Moreover, the very founder of today's Christianity, Paul, was himself very controversial. Christian's belief that he was a divinely inspired apostle is so obscure. First of all, Paul, who had never personally met Jesus, was not among the twelve disciples. Second, he had persecuted many of the real followers of Jesus. Third, Paul's teachings, in general, contradict those of Jesus, peace be upon him. In fact, large part of the New Testament, which was ratified by Emperor Constantine during the Nicene Council in 325 AD, was Paul's own fabrications. Specifically, Paul's letters to the Romans, the Galatians, the Philippians, and the like were his own making. Which do not at all conform to the real teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. In fact, this book has shown that virtually all of the Pauline epistles had no reference to the practical teachings, personal sayings and real personality of Jesus, peace be upon him. Based on the historical facts presented in this book. Christians only need to use their objectivity and rational thinking to realize that the man-made trinity that they have been worshipping all the years is nothing but a product of political end. Personal money pollutions by such men as Athanasius, Constantine, and Paul. Their criminal backgrounds or immoralities were enough grounds that they were devoid of any divine inspiration. It follows, therefore, that the Trinitarian doctrine is human and not divine in nature. This book has also shown that the mysterious nature of the controversial Trinity can be solved through the concept of God in Islam. Several Quranic injunctions are presented, which explicitly refute the Trinitarian doctrine and the divinity of Jesus, affirm the divine unity of God. Stress the fundamental truth that God is self-reliant, hence devoid of any partner, and highlight the belief in Allah, the one and only true God, as the key to salvation. On the other hand, joining partners with Allah is the key to hellfire, so he commands us not to worship anyone other than him. Indeed, Allah is self-sufficient, he does not have to share his divinity with anyone else. Therefore, Christians who really seek truth only need to revert to the belief in the absolute oneness of God. For them to be able to avoid the confusion or mystery underlying the Trinitarian doctrine. After all, Jesus and all other prophets, peace be upon them all, taught the divine unity of God, which is the very creed of Islam the peaceful submission to the will of God. Today, Islam has already surpassed Christianity as the number bur one religion in the world. This is so, because the real seekers of truth found Islam as the only religion that truly advocates the belief in the absolute oneness of God. Furthermore, Islam is growing so fast, because many of those who embraced it as their new faith have played a very significant role in conveying its message to the rest of mankind. Islam considers salvation as a personal responsibility, that is based on one's faith, piety, righteousness. Steadfastness and noble service not an object of blood atonement or vicarious sacrifice it abolishes idolatry, a practice which is commonplace to all other religions.
It is the only religion in the world that has upheld the absolute oneness of God, a divine concept, which in every respect serves as the ultimate solution to the Trinitarian controversy.